So, regarding those eight categories, which we mentioned previously, each of these categories, they have a number of things that they must do or manners that they must observe. observe. The first is that they understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, obligated that the spending of zakat uh, and giving it to them is so that um, they can, they can um, fulfill their need, fulfill what it is that they need. And by doing that, they can um, direct themselves to seeking the pleasure of Allah. This has a lot to do with what I said as an introduction. That they're no longer distracted um, uh, with, their, with their poverty. They're no longer distracted by, uh, or, or they're no longer enticed to act out or sinfully, but they get what they need and they continue to seek the pleasure of Allah, the mighty and majestic. Number two is that they thank the donor. The person that came to give the zakat, if they know who they are, they thank them and they supplicate for them, make dua for them, and they, and they praise what they've done. They praise them for what they've done. But this has to be within reason at a certain level. And the level is you are nothing more than the cause. You are the cog in the wheel, if you will. You are a part of something much greater that's going on here. You are not Allah. You are not at the end of this. If it, if it wasn't you, then it would be someone else. So the person still does deserve some gratitude because the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, Man lam nas lam If you don't thank people, then you haven't thanked Allah. Because Allah uses people. Allah uses people like tools. And so to show grat gratitude to those people that have been used, you're also showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so therefore, this, um, this is one of the manners that the recipient of zakat should observe. Is they should be grateful, within reason of course. And um, the pinnacle of gratitude is that you do not belittle what you were given. You do not belittle what you were given, even if it be a little bit, even if it be uh, minute in proportion. You don't blame the person for the little that you've received, and you try and conceal whatever faults you find within what, within what you've received. Right? You try and conceal that. So, you know, if someone comes to you and, and, and gives you zakat, and it's $50, you're in need of a of, of thousand dollars. You don't go, what is this? $50, what am I going to do with that? That's all you got. You know, that's, that's poor, poor manners. That's ingratitude. Um, this may be all the zakat that they have, which means they're not that wealthy anyway. <laughs> they're not that wealthy anyway, and they're giving you what they, what they, what they, what, what's due. Here, this is what I have. And what's the opposite of that? The opposite is that you would have gotten nothing. You would have gotten nothing. You don't want that, you may end up with nothing. So you have to um, uh, try not to belittle whatever you receive. And then, if they gave you something else, you know, if the zakat was in the form of a livestock or, or something, some material good, and it wasn't the best looking or the, the newest looking or the fanciest or the name brand or whatever you were you really dreaming after or dreaming for, you shouldn't belittle it and turn it away, turn your nose up at it. And similarly, the person that gives, when they give it, they diminish it in their own eyes. If they come and they, they, have, they find someone they're going to give $10,000 to in charity or zakat, they don't look at that as $10,000. They try and minimize that and say, this is all I can give, I'm so sorry. You know, I wish I could have given more. This is not sufficient. This is not enough. This is, is a, a small gesture or token. Instead of going, becoming very proud and egotistic and saying, I've changed your life, I've changed your world, I've, I'm your savior. Look how much I've given you. You know, the person that gives, they have to diminish that. And the person that receives um, he will try and uh, magnify what he gets. So it's kind of a 
But you have to have both sides here. The person that gives, they try and minimize, and the person that receives, they try and magnify the little bit that they give so that, um, so that it's appreciated. Of course, none of this will... Um, None of this, of course, um, diminishes how you see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, for someone that does not see al-wasita, which is a, 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 a mediary, as a wasita, then this is an ignorant person. You don't see the mediary as the mediary, but you see them as the sole provider, the producer of what you have, then this is an ignorant person. And the person that thinks that the wasifa is, he says, al-asl, which is like the origin of the money, for example. He said, well, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have received. Then this is something that's quite evil. When you see a person that gives zakat, you receive it, and you say, well, if it wasn't for them, who knows where I'd be? If it wasn't for them, who knows I'd be, you know. No, you need to, say, you need to, you need to put things in their proper place, right? You have to always remember that you have to appraise Allah with a, a true appraisal. وَمَا قَدْرُ اللَّهِ حَقَّ قَدْرِ right? Many people, they don't do this. They don't appraise Allah a proper and true appraisal. What is Allah doing? What is He providing? What is He giving? How is He working? And sometimes we, we, we skip that part and then we end up just assigning all of these things to those that are around us. The next one... Uh, number three of uh, the manners for the recipient. They should uh, take consideration of what they receive. They take the, the following into, into consideration. Number one, if it's not halal, they should not take it. If someone says, look, I just robbed the bank. I'm going to cut you 2.5% because I got to purify my wealth. He said, you robbed the bank? Yeah, right up the corner. I figured I'd try and purify that because the cat purifies wealth. So I'm going to give you 2.5. What do you do? <laughs> I don't want that. You don't take that. Yeah, by, by giving, uh, by, by um, distributing the cat money that's not yours, it's not the cat. It's not your wealth to distribute in the first place. If there is some doubt about the money, then you should try and abstain from receiving it as well. If, for example, um, there's a person that's known for a certain type of business or a certain type of income, but it's possible that they also have some halal income on the side. But you're just, conf you're just worried that I have no idea where this is coming from. Then you should try your best to avoid taking it because this is a doubtful matter and the doubtful matters they should be avoided. Unless, of course, you're just in a dire need. You, you, you have la mahala. There's just no way that you're going to survive unless you take uh, this doubtful zakat money or charity. So then to the non-halal you can take even that So the person whose um, their, their income is mostly haram and then they give their zakat money from wealth they, they don't know about it particularly, right? So their, their, their money is all mixed up. You know, my job, I've got the halal job, which gives me 20 grand a year, and then I've got the haram job, which gives me 50 grand a year, and I got, I've just dumped it all in together, and, you know, I've, I don't know what, where I spent my halal income, I don't know where I spent my haram income, uh, now I'm going to go give zakat. So the person that receives that, if they are aware of that, um, then al fatwa, what it used to be, is that you give sadaqah with that, with that haram portion. But he says, however, it's permissible for the faqir to take the portion that he needs. Take just enough to fulfill the need if they are in a dire situation and they are unable to take zakat, which is purely halal. Okay? 
Then the last one, number four, is um, to be very particular in regards to the amount of zakat that you take. You should take what is permissible for you and not take any more than what is needed. So if you are in debt and you're receiving zakat money um, because of debt, then you need to take the exact amount that you owe to repay your debt. And if you are, he says, a, a soldier in the army, because part of the zakat can go to funding the soldiers in the armed forces, right? In, in America, they have government money. That's our tax money. Shukran. Right? So in Islam, um, the zakat money can go to help pay the army or the armed forces or whatever. And so if you are a soldier, then you're permitted to take so long as you're taking what is sufficient for you. So basically what they used to do then is you would take, for example, in order to cover your expenses, your, you know, your, your living expenses, and then you need to equip yourself. You need your supplies. You need those types of things. So you could take the cash for that. And then if it's for a domicile, um, then you're going to take whatever it is that you need without um, going overboard and taking excess. And of course, this requires a person to exercise their own judgment, to employ their best judgment as to what it is that they need and then to be scrupulous to avoid um, taking more than they need that they should, they should be very weary of when they start to doubt, is this too much? We know when it's too much, but there comes a point when you're calculating, when you're taking, I, this, I may be taking a little bit too much. At that point, you should, you should stop and withhold from receiving any extra zikat or sadaqah.